What's up, everybody? Welcome back inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center for the first time in 2023. Letterman Rowe, back in the building, fellas. It's good mm -hmm. to be back talking to the Ohio State coaches. Talk to Ryan Day for the first time since the Peach Bowl. We were in the bowels of Mercedes-Benz Stadium the last time we saw Ryan Day. Until February 1st, today we finally got to talk to him. We're going to break it down in the latest off-season report presented by Byers Auto, an in-person one for the first time this calendar year as well. That's the 40-year vet, Tim May. That's Andy Backstrom. I am Spencer Holbrook. Let's uh, let's dive in, fellas. A lot to talk about. We we talked to every assistant coach on the the assistant coaching roster. I guess we also talked to an assistant of an assistant, uh, James Laurinaitis, uh, newest coaching addition. Ryan Day had a lot to say. Tim, uh, just big takeaway. Uh, other than the injuries that guys who missed the spring, you can find out lettermanrow.com. I'll go through those later in the show. But yeah. Tim, biggest takeaway of talking to the assistants and from Ryan Day. Well, number one, uh, Ryan Day, as I asked him, you know, do you really start with a blank sheet of paper, you know, from square one when it comes to this quarterback, this quarterback battle that's ensuing uh, between uh, Cal McCord and Devin Brown primarily. Uh, obviously, uh, one of the guys who's tr transferring in, Tristan Jebbia, uh, he's basically your insurance policy, and then the other guy, Lincoln Keenholz, isn't even here yet. So uh, the bottom line is he goes, yeah, you know. I mean, now, no one, you know, he understands I understand this. No one starts with a totally blank, maybe a blank sheet of paper, but not a blank mind, you know what I mean? But I think the, uh, the most intriguing, obviously, battle, it's always cool when the quarterback position is up for grabs at any kind of major college, but especially a place like Ohio State where – the last three years, the uh, quarterback, starting quarterback at Ohio State has gone to the Heisman Trophy uh, ceremony or has been a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Uh, you know what's it in, in, entailed here. You know what it means from a value standpoint to the players involved and to the team. And uh, so uh, they are starting with a blank sheet of paper. Now that's not uh, earth shattering or anything. And then past that, I mean, clearly, Job 1A and 1B is finding three starters on the offensive line. And I'll let Andy address maybe some of that. But uh, uh, they're also starting with almost a blank sheet of paper there, except for the two guys who are returning, Matt Jones and uh, Donovan Jackson, uh, the two guards. Yeah, and one thing to add on the quarterback situation, Ryan Day did say that would, they would like to have a starter by the end of the spring after those 15 practices. He said it would be good for the program if they could. Um, and then another note, too, the play calling was brought up. There's been reports throughout the offseason that Ryan Day would potentially give up play calling duties to an assistant. Um, he talked about that, said that Brian Hartline would get a chance to call plays during the spring season, but they're not deciding anything until after the spring season, or at least going into that discussion until they've gotten through the 15 practice. As for the offensive line, yes, there's two returning starters in Donovan Jackson and Matt Jones, and it seems like the idea is to keep them at their spots at the guard positions, have a new guy at center, have a new guy at the tackles, that way you have a veteran in between next to yeah. all the new guys. Uh, Justin Fry was talking about that and just that they like what they did at guard last season for Matt Jones and Donovan Jackson. Um, they talked about Carson Hinsman a lot at center. They really like what he's done just from a year of being in this program and obviously has made strides there. Um, they also just talked about uh, Tegra uh, Tishbola as well. It's hard to pronounce the last name, but uh, he's talking about moving them to tackle and having him outside. He's also played inside and traveled for a lot of the games last year. So he's used to this environment, used to this atmosphere, um, but a lot of changes for the offensive line group. But Justin Fry kind of reiterated, that's the hungriest group. You got that many positions that are available. That also means it's where there's the most competition. Yeah, it's interesting because I wrote a depth chart projection and a way too early depth chart projection at lettermanrow.com a couple weeks ago. And I had Jacob James as the starting center. Well, Jacob James is now out for the spring, according to Ryan Day. You know, I don't like to, to take the spring injuries because a lot of guys have off-season surgeries. A lot of guys yeah. have procedures. Just keeping but them up pre precautionary. I, I do believe that this is the most significant. You, you're losing to Meke Buka for the spring. You're losing Julian Fleming. Those guys are known commodities. You know what they're going to be. You know what they're going to do. They're going to be healthy for the fall. Jacob James, they were excited about last year as the backup center. They were excited to get him into a flow of things. He's out for the spring now. Well, all of a sudden, I'm standing here on, on the practice field at the Woody today, and I'm hearing Carson Hinsman's name at every turn from every offensive coach and from Ryan Day, who brought him up organically. Didn't Wasn't asked about him, just brought him up. If I had to redo a depth chart projection, and I think I'm going to have to do it at the very end of the spring, I think right now the leading candidate to be the starting center is a second-year kid from Wisconsin, Carson Hinsman. This is a guy who a lot of people are talking very highly of. You don't, 
you don't hear him talk about you know young second year players very often in this regard and so I was I had a very big eye I guess on Tegra Tashibola already heading into the spring I think he can be a difference maker he can crack that too deep now I've got a zero in on Carson Hensman and really see what the Buckeyes have here because they seem to be pretty confident that if there's a guy who's going to emerge, it might be Carson Hensman at center. Yeah, and I've, I've talked about this before. You, know, you don't know about these guys until they really get their shot. I mean, when you're behind a so-called veteran group of offensive linemen, there's a chance, there's a, you know, it's not like being at running back where you know you're going to play a lot, you know, mm-hmm. even a second, third teamer. And I'll get into that in a minute, that aspect of things. But uh, uh, when, a, when a guy finally sees the light at the end of the tunnel and they start stepping up, that's – that's what this spring is all about for the, for basically the most critical parts of an offense. I mean, it's great having all these skill guys back, but you've got to have an offensive line you can launch from, and you've got to have a quarterback. And those are the two factors I'm, I'm watching closely. And uh, and they've got guys. I mean, Josh Fryer, they're going to lean on Josh Fryer like he's been playing for 30 years. I mean, that's literally what they're going to – or he's been playing as long as uh, Tristan Jebbia. It's a long career. <laughs> 30 yeah. years is a long but, career, uh, too. Yeah. But, you know, I'm talking that. well, maybe they're getting there. I mean, Tristan Jebbia headed for his seventh year. But uh, but but you never know who's going to step up once they get that shot. Uh, and, the, and the thing about it is the thing about Carson, Carson Hensman, the, the, the interesting thing about him is at the end of the day, no matter what day it is, whether it's uh, uh, February 1st like it is today or August 1st or September the 1st, you got to put five guys out there. So it's even though they get tired of us asking who who would your five be, you know, if they had to play a game tomorrow, who would your five be? That'd be an interesting uh, question for them to answer. And it looks like, for example, Carson Hensman would probably be their starting center if they were playing a game tomorrow. So yep. it's always key to keep up with that. Andy, let's switch gears a little bit here on the offseason report presented by Byers Auto. Uh, defensively, the Buckeyes added a couple different difference makers. We weren't able to talk about Davis and Igbenosin today, the Ole Miss transfer cornerback from yesterday, because not everything's finalized. The Buckeyes can't officially talk about him per the rules. I don't make them. Ohio State follows him. That's yeah. what, what it is. But they were able to talk about Jihad Carter. Uh, Perry Eliano, very excited about Jihad Carter. Uh, everyone in the building, I think, is, is excited to see him blossom at Ohio State. You know, Perry Eliano, the safeties coach, talked about having to set the standard with him and make sure he knows the, the position that he's in and, and knowing that, hey, you're at Ohio State now. You know, you're, this is in Syracuse. And, and he said that putting the work in at 6.30 this morning, watching him run uh, drills and go through training, you can see that he's, he's really buying into what the Buckeyes preach here. I, I think this is a huge addition for the defense. And, and when you're missing – different guys on that side of the ball for spring. You know, Tommy Eichenberg is going to be out. You need some veteran presence there. Well, Jihad Carter's not a veteran here, but he's a veteran in a sense of he's played a lot of football. And so you, you mix in Josh Proctor, Lathan Ransom, Jihad Carter now. The the secondary looks like it's a lot more of a veteran unit, the defensive line. This, this unit, adding Jihad Carter, I think is a huge deal, and Ryan Day echoed that today. Yeah, I mean, when you lose Tanner McAllister and you lose Ronnie Hickman, you need to do something, go out and get a guy like Jihad Carter in the transfer portal. And Jim Knowles talked about his versatility. This is a guy who can play nickel. This is a guy who can play single high. Yeah, he's really done it all at Syracuse. His coverage skills really stick out. Uh, we talked about it in a different video, but the Clemson game, he had an interception, also had a scoop and score. He's around the ball. He knows his way around a defense, and to have him on that back end is certainly an advantage. And really rebuilding a spot that was a bit of a weak point for, for this team last year. And, you know, one thing that was brought up a lot today was explosives. It's still on everyone's mind. It was the reason why they lost against Michigan, and it was a big reason why they lost against Georgia as well. And Ryan Day spoke about that saying, we can't have it, we can't have that again. It's not a matter of we can allow two, three, four explosives a game and get away with it. If you're gonna win a national championship, you can't have those. And that was talked about. And you know, Jim Knowles even said like, that still haunts him. There's certain calls, there's certain plays you still think about. Sure. He's, he said that he's watched the game film once, uh, he's cut it up, he's gonna watch it more but it's interesting to dissect that process because that was a lot of this defense last year. As improved as it was, there were those big plays, yep. and it was almost this allowance of a few per game, and now it feels like, well, we can't have that anymore. Yeah, and the thing about it is, defensively, you want the other team to feel desperate to attack you down. The, I mean, just let it all hang out. Throw 50-50 balls out there. They ended up not being as 50-50 as Ohio State would like. And that clearly, I mean, right after the game, when I asked uh, Ryan Day about it, 
uh, the Georgia game. Yeah, that was that cut him to his core because you know you had a you had all year, but then you had a whole month to kind of like get some of those things sorted out, and it still bit him big time. And a touchdown, a touchdown by any means is is a big deal. A touchdown given up on one play or one or two plays is an even bigger deal because it puts you deeper in a hole from the other side. So uh, I asked Perry Aliano about that. I asked Tim Walton. I asked uh, Jim Knowles about it. You know, like how much sleepless nights, et cetera, do you stay up thinking? They go, of course they do. This is their life, man. And uh, but they they think they think that things can be remedied by just getting back to basically basics, fundamentals, techniques, et cetera. It's really bit them on several of those plays where guys just had poor technique. Well, whose fault is that, you know? Uh, you teach technique all day, every day, and then in a big time moment when the lights are bright, you have some guys fall down, uh, you have some guys turn the wrong way, et cetera. Stuff you know they're not taught, but it ends up being that way. So that will, it'll be interesting to see the little minute changes that maybe they make defensively after a month of digesting uh, what went on in that Michigan game and that Georgia game. But then past that, uh, Jihad Carter, getting back to him, kind of like adding Tanner McAllister a year ago. Here's a guy that's proven, uh, can walk into that room, like we talked about uh, earlier with uh, James Laurinaitis, walks into that linebacker meeting room, uh, new GA, former three-time All-American and uh, Buckus Award winner, etc. He walks in that, that meeting room with, with credentials and credibility. Jihad Carter will walk in, has walked in with credibility about him. He's played, you know what I mean? And uh, and played on a pretty good, pretty good level. So I think that's a that's a huge uh, that's a huge a get as they got in that transfer portal. Yeah, and, and to both of your points, you know, this this defense, I asked Perry Oliano, I said late in the season, teams started to put your safeties in one on one situations as if they were corners. I asked him, are there any thought processes going on behind the scenes about Cross training more than you did last year with getting these safeties and making sure that they're in, you know, position to be cornerbacks when teams put them in position to be cornerbacks. Georgia took its fastest player, and Lathan Ransom's quick. Georgia took its fastest player, put him on an island against Lathan Ransom, and he had 76 yards on one play for a yeah. touchdown. Those kind of things can happen, but also that's called scheming. That's what that's a scheme. You know, Todd Munkin's a good offensive coordinator. Jim Knowles a good defensive coordinator. In that chess match, there was a checkmate there. I mean, yeah. or at least a check, and Jim Knowles had to, to try to do something else. But let me interrupt you. It's funny. It's 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 hard for people to take when it's done against the team you're you're rooting for. Yeah. But when Jackson Smith and Jigba did it, everybody thought it was genius. But go exactly. Ahead. But we've got all off season to talk about this stuff. We have we have all off season now to dissect everything that all ten off ten assistant coaches and Ryan Day told us today. Mark Pantoni also was out here on the field talking. I'm sure Matt Parker will have some stuff. Uh, on the recruiting side at lettermanrow.com where we covered this beautiful, wonderful facility and this team all year round. Hey, one other quick thing before we go. But also, uh, Ryan Day said they, they have really addressed this transfer portal NIL uh, uh, recruiting mix that's going on and stuff. Uh, you get the impression, just from what he said, he thinks some good things are coming out for Ohio State in the next several months. You get the impression that Ohio State is going to step a little bit more <laughs> into that region uh, you know, because everybody else is doing it. I mean, we'll see how that goes. But obviously the NCAA has decided not to, like, put in any huge guardrails because where do you put them and how do you put them? Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how recruiting ramps up in, in different aspects uh, heading forward for Ohio State. I think they've already been a little bit more aggressive but in you the NIL and transfer portal. But, yeah, it's going to continue to ramp up as the Buckeyes navigate the new world of college football and they navigate this offseason that's full of motivation. Already the Buckeyes are not the top dog in, in the Big Ten anymore. Uh, they've got to get back there. They've got the motivation of the Georgia game. They've got the motivation of, you know, replacing a lot of starters, a lot of key guys. We're going to break it down at lettermanrow.com. That's Andy Backstrom. The 40-year vet, Tim May. I'm just Spencer Holbrook. Thanks to Matt Parker behind the scenes. Behind the camera, we will see you guys at lettermanrow.com. We cover this team all year round. Come check us out in the Letterman Lounge. $30 until next August. You can get all the off-season coverage you could possibly handle and, and then some. Come hang out with us, and we'll see you guys back in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center next time they allow us in here for another off-season report presented by Byers Auto.